In this video we're going to calculate the area of a fire scar that occurred from a bushfire north of Brune. We'll use sentinel imagery from before and just after the burn occurred and using the raster calculator in QGIS we'll calculate the delta normalized burn ratio. From this we can apply a pseudocolor which gives us severity. Uh, we can reclassify the raster so we can convert it to a vector polygon and after some tidying up we can get a polygon that estimates the fire scar area. For our example, we're going to use NAFI Fire North website to find a, a burn that's already happened and has been mapped, just so we can compare it with the results of our analysis. Uh, this is a really useful website. Um, we're going to find our fire that was just northeast of Broome. We can see it happened in May of this year, so we can download those uh, shape files as polygons. Knowing the date the fire occurred just makes it easier to download the sentinel imagery before and just after the fire but we may not know when the fire occurred. So drop your shapefile into QGIS. So then we can start to download some imagery using the SCP plugin. I've already done this from uh, just before and after the burn. And we're gonna be using bands eight and bands 12, that's near infrared and shortwave infrared. And from the post imagery, you can actually get a good indication of where the fire was even before you start your, your analysis. So we're going to use the raster calculator as always, and we're just going to do our delta normalized burn ratio in one sweep. So we've got the pre-imagery, um, a ratio between the bands and the post-imagery, and we just subtract one from the other. Just name your file as something intuitive, and the processing will take a few minutes. When it's done, uh, we're just going to clip to um, clip around the raster where our fire was just to make the file a little bit smaller for the rest of our processing. And then we'll just rename that uh, clipped file again to maintaining a good naming structure. So from here, we're going to refer to some documentation from Firemon, which gives us some tables of uh, severity. And just to match our, our uh, delta NBR to this table, we're going to multiply our raster by 1,000 using the raster calculator. And with that, we'll, we'll save it as a file name that um, links it to that Firemon scale, just in case anyone else was to look at our data. So after having a look at some of the, um, the raster values, most of our fire is above 200 on the scale. So we're just gonna use that as a cursory value to clip out any extra uh, pixels that we don't want from that raster. And then you can add a pseudocolor. And the cutoff point I should have put here was 200, but I made a mistake, but say la vie. So, once this is in place, we can get a really nice visual of the intensity of the fire across that fire scar. We can just uh, use the attribute inspector just to look at some of those uh, raster values and compare them with the fire mon. So all around red is probably over 600, which is very severe. So some, some sort of a hotspot happened here, maybe to do with the terrain, the slope, and possibly vegetation in that area. And again, we can always refer back to the Firemon scale just to validate what it is we're seeing. So the next step we want to do is create, um, convert this raster to a polygon. So we will reclassify the raster by all of those values that are over 200, uh, remembering that I made a mistake earlier and put in 299. So simply use the raster calculator again and create another raster layer.
And um, once that is done, go into the properties and set the no data value as zero. And that will just give us the outline of fire scar itself. And then we can use the raster conversion uh, polygon eyes. So with our polygon, you want to filter it to be only values that are one. So get rid of all that purple area that we don't want. And if we take a look at the file itself, we can see it still is made up of quite a lot of different features, which we can tidy up with various tools. Uh, when we're done with our just our cursory tidying up, we can select everything in our uh, polygon. Just ignore those ones. So when we're done tidying up, we can select all of our polygon using this tool and merge features using the advanced digitizing toolbar which is here. And if you're looking for that digitizing toolbar, just right click anywhere here and you can um, add it to your toolbars. So now we've got a polygon that's made up of one um, feature. We want to get rid of some of those holes uh, that are inside of the polygon. So we can use delete holes and leave the value here as zero. And it'll do a pretty good job. It won't get everything, but it'll do a good enough job for now. And we can see it's left a couple of uh, gaps in the middle of the polygon. We can again tidy those up using the vertex tool. And when that is done, we are going to smooth those um, the outside of the polygon using the smooth. I'm just going to add five iterations. I find that was enough to do the job pretty well. Let's just take some of the blocky features off the side. So we'll take a look at the before and after. Not going to make a significant difference to calculate the area, but it just looks a little bit easier on the eye. The next step, we're going to add a new uh, field to this, to the metadata for this polygon, and we're going to use it to name the polygon when we add some labels. So add a new field, uh, make it a text, and just for our example, we're going to call this one Broom Northeast Complex. From here on in, you can add your own style to the polygon. And we're going to add some custom labels using that name field that we created earlier, and also assigning a, a geometry area to the label. By default, uh, QGIS returns meters cubed for area, but we can add a really simple conversion to get hectares and add it to our label. And now we can take a look at the original fire shape from NAFI and just compare how our uh, classification of this fire scar in terms of area compares. Uh, we've already set up the labels for this one, we just need to switch back on. 
and again it's 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 a little bit different um, or or polygon is probably a lot more accurate but for the purposes of what Nafi does this is more than uh, more than enough and that pretty much brings this video to an end so we've used the delta normalized burn ratio to estimate the area of a burn scar northeast of Broome in May